Good Thank evening, you. Madam Chair, members of the Commission. Leslie Olson, Interim Director of Planning and Development Services, for the record. We are not beginning. <clears throat> Scheduled for hearing this evening is Compost USA of the Treasure Coast, a conditional use permit application requesting approval of an operation of a biosolids composting facility in Agricultural 5 zoning. This quasi-judicial public hearing was continued from the board's March 7th hearing on the petition to tonight's meeting. The purpose for the March 7th continuation was to obtain the professional services of experts to address concerns related to pathogens, odors, ground and surface waters, and potential impacts to existing and proposed agricultural uses in the area. Since that hearing, staff has retained the services of Dr. Sally Brown, an expert on biosolids composting from the University of Washington, and Dr. Keith Schneider from the University of Florida, an expert in agricultural pathogen transmittal and regulations. Staff has also obtained a quote from an engineering firm for air and water quality surveys and analysis. However, the cost was prohibitive. As an alternative to the county shouldering this cost, we have provided the scope of services to the applicant, requesting them to provide the data to staff for review and analysis, as depicted on this slide, including ground and surface water analysis, detailed stormwater analysis, nutrient transport model, as well as other data. The applicant indicated to us that they can provide this data within 30 days, and staff will need an additional 60 days to review the data for accuracy and perform an impact analysis based on the data. Therefore, the earliest this item can be heard is, staff, is August 4th, 2015. Applicant has requested continuance to this date, and staff is supportive of this request. Staff recommends continuance of this hearing to August 4th, 2015. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the board at this time? Madam Chair, um, yes, I raised this in uh, meetings with staff and also the applicant uh, that the EPA is uh, currently going over the 503 rules um, and those uh, will not be available until October. Um, and those rules could either uh, be more stringent uh, or uh, less regulation. And I think that that will be important for us to have those uh, EPA rules uh, because I think they're going to be important for us hearing this hearing or hearing this applicant and this process. So I don't know if um, we have been able to uh, investigate the EPA rules uh, scenario and what timing that would be because uh, I don't want to see uh, our residents having to come out from multiple meetings and continue to wear them down. I think they should have a complete hearing with all the information. Uh, up at the And, and, and if those EPA rules would be coming uh, forthwith in, in the October time frame, um, and also, you know, the, we've also have the summer months in which many of our residents uh, will be traveling. Um, I think that uh, given the opportunity, if we're going to uh, continue this, it should be in a time frame that's more appropriate uh, for the residents. But as more important, uh, really, is the EPA rules. Uh, which could uh, help us in making this decision uh, based on the new regulations that will may be formed. So I don't know who to speak to on that as to whether those EPA rules have been reviewed or not. Uh, Leslie, were you able to, to look into that at all? Yes, uh, Commissioner Sadowski, Madam Chair. Um, the earliest, I believe, that they could be published potentially is sometime in October, which means, you know, that if we wanted to hold off on this hearing, to hear what the rules would be. Um, the earliest meeting that would be would be Tuesday, November 3rd. Um, <clears throat> however, uh, you know, in order to ensure we have adequate time to review those, you might want to give us another month because we'd have to have the agenda package into you probably by the time they were um, published. So maybe then you would be looking at the first Tuesday in December, which is uh, December 1st. And we are open to that. It is at the discretion of the board as to uh, what date this is continued to. I know that the applicant is also here to speak to the board if you if you have any questions. And, and just so you know, uh, Madam Chair, I did uh, raise this to the applicant uh, in, a, in a meeting. 
So uh, they're not going to be blindsided by this request. Um, but we didn't have that information uh, readily available to me uh, to, to determine. Um, but I just want to raise that to your attention. And again, from a standpoint of if we're going to continue this to August 5th, I think at least um, the possibility of moving it to an October, November, or even December time frame uh, would be more important and appropriate for us to have all the information, but also um, have the public uh, be able to, to attend uh, one hearing instead of coming back in August 4th or 5th and then coming back again in October or November. I'm just trying to save the residents from, from uh, having to be worn down by the process of meeting after meeting after meeting being uh, continued. So. Any further comment from the board? Uh, and just maybe to expound upon that, obviously the, the 503 rules specifically only deal with biosolids, so that's a biosolids rule, and the discussion that they're talking about are the air emissions, and so I think that is that's a good comment that you bring up as it relates to the changes that are being proposed. So I think there's some, some real merit in that discussion. Well, we're obviously not having a full presentation this evening, but since the applicant is present, is there anything you would like to say at this point in time? I'm not sure where they've gone. Are they in the back? Or did you have it? Certainly, did you have any comments on the suggestion that it be postponed? Good evening, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Rick Melcori with Becker Holdings. On behalf of the applicant, um, our biggest concern, and I'm sure you're all familiar with federal rulemaking, is if the rules are published in October, that sets up for a challenge, which most likely the federal rules do get challenged, and it takes them into a lawsuit or you know various legal challenges, which could take years to get settled. Excuse me. Excuse me, I'd just like to ask, I know there is a lot of emotion connected with this item, but if you could please try to behave as if we're at a meeting, please. Thank you. Our concern is very simple, is that we're going to end up in a position where the rules are not going to be finalized. We're going through the drafts right now um, with actually some of the consultants for some of the people that had some concerns. Um, you know, we're trying to address everything possible with the consultants. Uh, we've looked at their changes to the draft resolutions and trying to work with them to make sure that they're happy. Um, obviously, we have, some, as an agricultural company, we do not want to do anything that's going to hurt the agricultural community around us. So we're working with them as best we can. Um, like I said, my, my biggest concern is that we're going to end up in a position where October, November, December, we're not going to have any finalization to this, and then we're going to be sitting here again saying, well, let's wait till March and so on and so forth. And we began this process um, over a year ago now. So we'd like to, you know, at least get some data on the calendar that's reasonable so we can, you know. And if there's issues that come up, and I know there's, there's a couple of consultants that have been following this that are very intimate with those regulations, if those come up and there's issues that we seem that can't get resolution to, then we'll be happy to come back and, and, and continue it at that point. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank Ma you. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I, I find it a little odd that you all were the ones that actually asked for the extension. And so now that you've asked for the extension, you're not liking the August request that we're looking to extend it beyond that. And, and I just find some of that to be a little disingenuous in that respect. The, con the continuance was basically because staff is asking for information that is generally over and above what's required for a conditional use. And we agreed to provide that information. And to do that, we need time. And we agreed that August was a fair amount of time that we could give them the information and they would have time to digest it, ask their representatives, their consultants, et cetera, to be able to review it. So that's why we, we agreed to the August 5th date. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. When, and you've been in my office and we've talked about this and, and you're not hearing anything different than what we have already spoken about. Um, my concern is is that you know there was a time when uh, the rules uh, permitted Class C biosolids to be spread upon uh, the state of Florida, and, and there were nine permits in the state of Florida for Class C biosolids, which were later found out to be uh, a terrible uh, process, and they were changed. The rules were changed, and here we are approaching a situation in which you know biosolids will be addressed by the EPA. And as I said to you in my office, I said, you know, these rules could either help you or hurt you. 
Uh, we don't know the answer to that until such time as the rules have been vetted and brought through uh, through the draft experience and then, then and then made rule. As you said, there may be some some legal concerns there, but if that's the case, uh, wouldn't you be concerned that there might be people in this audience that would would take us to court, take you to court, if we went and approved this thing and the rules were different, and then we'd all be in lawsuits for for years to come? Uh, so, you know, is that a concern? I I think we should take that into consideration. Well. Commissioner, with the way we would look at it very simply, if EPA changes the rules, they're the governing body ultimately, so we have to follow the rules. So we could not do something that would violate an EPA rule. So if, if the rule were changed in October or October of 2020, if we're operational, we still have to follow the rules of EPA. So regardless of when they're changed, we would be subject to those new rules. But this board was not is not going to have that information until such time. So what I'm trying to get across here is we need the information. We have vetted out. We've gotten uh, experts in the field. Uh, we're spending money on, on people trying to look at the issues uh, and all the information, the scientific data and so on. Uh, and so I don't want this board to be at a disadvantage either as to the information we need to make a proper decision, either for or against the project. Uh, so what I'm asking you is, as a good community partner, and I think that's what you want to be, and you've said that over and over in some of the conversations we've had, you want to do the right thing and you want to do this one right. So on behalf of the citizens that are here and those who are not here, uh, instead of having them strung along from uh, continuance to continuance to continuance, because they obviously want to have their voice heard, I would suggest that we get to a point where we have that final hearing in, say, November, December 1st. Um, it gives you plenty of time to, to deal with and, and manage all the draft materials that you, that you have, have your experts review them. Our staff and, and this board can review that, and we can reach out to additional experts if we so need. Um, I don't see that there's a, there's a, uh, a fast need for this uh, today, tomorrow, or in the next six months. Um, if you're going to be approved, this will be an ongoing project for you and a business model for you. But in the meantime, we have to make the right decision that's based uh, for St. Lucie County across the board. So I want us to have all the information available to us that we can make a proper decision. If the if the decision is to continue us to December, then we'll accept that condition. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Any further comment from the board? If I may, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Um, I do like the idea of waiting till we get all the information. Uh, this board has been one that's always waited, no matter what the situation was, until we got all the information. Um, that way we know what ground we stand on, uh, and we also are able to make a uh, uh, educated commitment on what we have to utilize to make our decision. Uh, because once again, at the end of the day, we have to do what's in the best interest of the citizens of St. Lucie County, life, lifestyle, family, uh, we do create opportunities for businesses to come, and we invite them to come. But at the end of the day, we still have to do what's in the best interest of the citizens. So we need to get all the information in before decision is made on that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Since there is no further comment from the board at this time, uh, this has been an advertised public hearing, so I will open to public comment. However, I would ask that if you will be able to be here, uh, well, actually, we need to get the date, don't we? So December 1st, at 6 p.m. Well, there. we haven't, that hasn't been determined to fact. I'm sorry. Pardon me? I'm sorry, Leslie gave us a date of December yes, 1st. Yes, ma'am. Well, we have not decided as oh, a board that it will be December 1st. That would be the date if we determine. Yes, thank you, sir. But, but close, <laughs> that, close that, that was an interesting yeah, move. Yes, sir. Closest possible date. Of, pardon me? Closest possible date to that time. Well, no, we need we need to be able to give them dates so we can suggest that Right, based upon what present. you were saying with the information, yes. Madam Chair. What I am saying is that we need to make the decision on what date that will be oh, so yes. I can no, announce I agree. I'm that sorry. to the public. That's all I'm <laughs> no, saying. I agree. I'm sorry. Yes. Madam Chair, I would just like, and I have no problem with it, whether it's, I'm glad for the delay because I agree with having all of the questions answered. Heaven only knows I think each of us has handed out a list yes. of questions to get answered. Um, but I would just ask that on that December meeting, if it's going to be December, that we take that into consideration. I don't want it to conflict with the very night that I think someone even brought up, that that's the night the 4-H kids usually come. 
so I know what's going on. <laughs> shout. You Thank shout you. your voice. Um, I have no... Do I need to start all over again? <laughs> yeah. I have no problem with the delay of the request for this to be continued nor the length of time because I feel just like everyone else the questions need to be answered that's one of the issues that I've personally been having is waiting on those answers to come in that being said on the December one I would just ask that we make sure that that does not coincide with the night that the 4-H groups come here because we will have more than standing room only and that's usually the time so if we're picking dates just, I'm just asking, don't do it on the same night that you're filled with all these children. Well, if we go for December, there's only one night meeting a month that would be that meeting. Well, does anyone have a suggestion? Uh, Ms. Madam Madam Chair. you did say that you felt we needed until December to be appropriately prepared to... If the rule is published in October, um, it depends on when it's published in October, but we need to have our agenda item into you almost two weeks before this this meeting is heard. So we won't have an opportunity to really read, understand, and perform an analysis of the rule in all likelihood if we continue this to the first meeting in November. Madam Chair, can I make follow up and make a suggestion? Please. I would be open to having because there's such public interest and we see that tonight and this is knowing that there's a request to continue it I would be open to suggesting that we do it on a separate night and do it as a standalone only issue on that agenda call a special meeting does anyone have any objections to that you know, I, I guess you were reading my mind because I was going to say we probably need to do a special meeting on that and I would uh, my sentiments is the same as yours. But of course, it'd have to be a 6 p.m. or. Yes. Yeah. If you, if you were, to, Madam Chair, if you were to look at, uh, say, uh, December the 3rd, Thursday, um, at 6 p.m., for a special meeting, I think the board typically sometimes thinks about Thursdays for a, for a special meeting. Does anyone have a problem with December, with Thursdays in general? December third, Thursday. Okay, we'll we'll aim for December third then. Do we need actually a motion to set that date, Mr. McIntyre? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. I I think uh, again you've opened the public hearing. I think uh, for the audience has benefited. It appears that the board, a majority of the board, uh, is interested in continuing this to a specially set meeting on uh, Thursday, December the 3rd at 6 p.m. or as soon thereafter as the item may be heard. I think as the chair indicated, uh, it's certainly the public hearing is open tonight, but we, given certainly the length of time, uh, it's, it's more than six months, we prefer if you can be there on the, on the 3rd that you hold any comments until that, uh, until that time. It would be more timely and, and appropriate and have more impact as opposed to doing it now and having that length of time. But if you know for sure you're not going to be there on the 3rd and you want to talk, then I think the board always has, has allowed that uh, at the public hearing. So I think before the board continues the item that we need to allow uh, any, any members of the public who do want to speak in, under those circumstances. That's why I asked you. It was kind of awkward to have the vote before the meeting, but I needed the date to be able to announce it. As Mr. McIntyre has said, we are asking for continuation to December 3rd. If you know you will not be here at that time, we could ask you to come forward now with your comments. However, if you will be here, it would be much more appropriate, much more meaningful. We're not making any kind of a decision this evening if you can hold your comments to then. But if you feel you won't be here at that point in time, we'd ask you to come forward now to speak. My name is Ant my name is Anton Pavelcheck. I'm a resident of PGA Village. I moved down here from New York to a clean environment. As, as an electrician and a construction worker, I worked in facilities that had sewerage and sludge and everything, and there's no way to control the fumes and the smell. And as what we're doing here tonight, we have all these residents here, and by pro postponing what you're postponing is you're just burning taxpayer dollars 
The residents here are in total disagreement. I don't think you'll find any hands that will go up in agreement to this project. And I think you shouldn't even have it on your agenda. You should just take it and scrap it and let them move somewhere west. They don't need to be here. Thank you comments, sir. Yes, ma'am, if you want to speak, please come forward. Good evening, commissioners. It, it's been a long time. Pamela Hammer, 7672 Charleston Way, in PGA Village. Commissioner Zagoski, thank you for common sense, for looking at the more information so that you have everything before you make a decision. Thank you for your courtesy to all of these people from PGA Village not making us come out August 4th and then September and then October. And we have a lot of people planning vacations. We have people that were going to fly in here just for the meeting on August 4th. So thank you so, so much for that consideration and that courtesy to the people in our community. We really are very grateful. I said that I would um, mention to you, we're not going to have people come up and speak, but they're here and they're interested, and I would just ask my fellow residents, if you're here from PGA Village and you're opposed to this project, would you please raise your hands? We knew you would not have a hearing tonight, but we came out to let you know who are watching, and we're very, very, very concerned. Now I have to go back to my old planning and zoning board hat. There's an issue that came up where there, they had um, specialists coming in, and there was one quote that was so expensive, you're not going to do it. That kind of freaks me out. It was the air and water quality report. And then P&Z said that, uh, staff said that they would have the applicant do the report. That scares me even more, because have you ever seen an applicant um, have you ever seen an applicant's report come back and say that the project is bad? I never have. Why can't we? And I thought this was going this was in um, in the process a number of years ago. Why can't that water and air quality report be done? because it is the group that you chose, and you make the applicant pay for it. That way you know you get a legitimate report back to you. So that's a couple of the things, especially air and water quality, that are very, very concerning to us. And by me bringing this to you, you have a little bit of time to decide, and maybe you can go ahead and make some changes where that's concerned. We appreciate what you do. We know that your job is really, really hard and we know that you have a lot of people calling and screaming at you all the time. But I also know that we had a resident that delivered over 500 petitions to you that they went out and paid for and did themselves because we care in PGA Village. Thank you for your attention. We really appreciate your help. Thank you. Yes, sir, please come forward. Hello, uh, I'm Douglas Logue, and I'm from a private homeowners association community two miles basically west of the planned site. I really have more of a question than uh, comments. We are all, though I echo what the lady just said, there is a vast amount of support in the communities, and it isn't just PGA, but uh, many other communities around here. Yeah. Can many other communities around here and, and individuals, farmers that we've talked to, this is a very large concerned area. My question is really more of a question. It's, it's fine that a governmental facility like you can get experts to look at this process. And we know the applicant can provide scientific material reportedly. What I want to know, uh, and I'm using a model of pharmaceutical companies, when you okay a drug, the pharmaceutical company will put in its its studies, and they'll be examined. 
and the government may put in its studies, but there are outside parties that can be enlisted. I simply want to know, because there's so much support here, not only emotional and psychological, but also financial, it, if, uh, is, it, is there a vehicle for the citizens to uh, hire some scientific help to look at this process, not just air quality, but uh, the, the prospect of hurricanes or tornadoes sludging this material into the C-24 canal. Is there a vehicle for the private community to put in scientific evidence to you all, besides the applicant and the government? Madam Chair, I think it's starting to let Mr. McIntyre answer that, but I think the simple answer is yes, you have public comment, and if you bring in your information, your um, science and research, you make that part of the public record as you're doing tonight. Thank you. That's all. Am I correct, Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. That, that, that actually is accurate, um, and actually it's in your best interest to present that kind of evidence uh, because if this goes – into a judicial proceeding afterwards, and I'm not suggesting it will or it won't, the, the court is going to look at evidence, and that kind of evidence is, is going to be effective as opposed to uh, people just standing up and saying, I'm, I'm objecting to it. So, yes, so I think the answer is yes, that's something you, you probably should consider doing. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Mike Monahan. Um, while we greatly appreciate the uh, support of the people in the PGA Village and the Reserve and the communities out there, I just want you to know that sitting on the back row quietly are the farmers from the west of the end of the county. <laughs> we are greatly concerned about our water quality. Um, sitting back there is a cattle rancher property across the street. My family probably has the closest remaining viable citrus operation closest to this. Um, the closest vegetable farmers sitting back there. We're all really concerned about what happens to us. Um, while we appreciate greatly now that you're doing some scientific research, we're really concerned that staff initially, county staff initially, was all for this project without any consideration as to what, what's going to happen to the rest of us and our property values. We are struggling in the agriculture industry. Uh, the representative from Becker tells us they are a long-time agriculture group in this community, and they were a powerful force in this community at one time. Personally, I don't know of any agriculture interest they have remaining in St. Lucie County. They have, as soon as the citrus problems came up, they ran, they shut their groves down, bulldozed them, they abandoned their office over on Jenkins Road, moved to Vero. They have a tremendous tree farm operation in Martin County, which is probably where most of the soil compost is going to go to. I would recommend, if that's their big plan, why don't they put it down there? Let those of us that are still trying to be in agriculture. Let those of us that are still trying to be farmers and trying desperately to support our area and our way of life continue with that, without having these additional problems that we have to face. We already face every other entity known to mankind with bugs and chemicals and every other thing that's happening to us already. Agriculture is a very difficult process at this point in time. And it just doesn't it, – I don't see why we need to bring this thing. This is not an agriculture operation. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dennis Bonzek. I'm on the board of directors of Heritage Oaks and uh, Tradition. I just want to let the people and the commissioners know that it's not just PGA Village that's uh, very concerned about this, but the uh, various communities in tradition also are extremely concerned. And you'll be hearing from them shortly also. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Gail Ryan, again, retired teacher from Chicago. I came here to relax. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I don't mean to be funny, but um, I was dragged kicking and stringing, uh, screaming three years ago about the water pollution in Florida, and we have made very big headways on social media. I'm here to represent my girlfriend, Katie Louie. She is on Facebook, which we have done a lot of work, and she has created a Facebook page called Say No to the Biosolid Compost. Compost. So I want you all to contact me. I'll be here for a while. This is where we could spread the word about this uh, problem and do research and posts, and the experts can get on here and really make a big thing about this to stop it. So I thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sandra Griffin. I was here in March, and I'm back again. I live in Port St. Lucie uh, West, PGA Village. In 2013, and this is something I didn't know when I was here last, after three and a half years of litigation over in Ocala, the judge ruled that Compost USA was to close up their shop, they gave them one year, and to get the heck out of Dodge. Now, they are over in Sumter, and they came to a meeting a few weeks ago before a large crowd at the PGA Village Clubhouse. They indicated that the smell, when the question was raised, was nothing more than a pile of horse manure in a barn. Well, I just recently learned that people over in Sumter are now going to the town council and complaining about odors in the air. This is something that we in Port St. Lucie do not need. We are well known, PGA Village is well known, people from all over the United States come here. Why would we want to make Port St. Lucie West another beta test site for Compost USA until they try to perfect their industry? Back in 2012, I was living in Jupiter, Florida. In 2011, we had learned there was an approved gas station that was given the go-ahead before any of the homes were built in the Abacoa community. When the residents learned that they had bought homes and were not told about this gas station, 16 Bay, that was going to be right down the street, they were very upset, and I was one of the people that kind of led the action group. To make a long story short, we found out that the underground tanks would have been only 500 feet for a water supply that would have supplied 80,000 people, including residents in parts of Martin County. So what the uh, town council in the town of, uh, I'm losing my train of thought here, in the Jupiter um, community did, they had said to the the people that wanted to develop this gas station. You are not going ahead and develop anything because we are mandating that you put up a million dollar bond renewable annually. And you know how fast they walked away? Because they couldn't guarantee anything. In Florida alone, there were over 32,000 cases of backlog potable water contamination, making us, this state, the highest state in the nation. Now, that number has been reduced dramatically, but we're still the leading state in the nation, the highest number of potable waters that are contaminated. We don't need this here in Canal 24. So I, I'm very, very pleased to learn tonight that you are looking at every single step, every single um, possibility that there could be pollutants definitely coming into our environment, and we don't need this. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'm Charles Albee from PGA Village. I am also on the uh, master board of the association, but uh, speaking as a, as a taxpayer, I would like to uh, commend the uh, commissioners on uh, their move tonight to uh, postpone this to December. But the uh, other question that I would have for the commissioners is uh, I understand that the, 
uh, the road would have to be vastly improved for the amount of traffic that's uh, anticipated for this. And I think that it would be prudent for you to do some studies on the cost of that. And if those dollars are going to be picked up by, uh, if you do approve it, by the company, or is it going to be a burden on us taxpayers? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please come forward. There's no one else that wants to address the board at this time. Since I jumped the gun, uh, commissioners, earlier, I do welcome the opportunity. I'll be very brief. I'll truncate my remarks. A lot of very good ideas were put forth this evening. Uh, I just wanted to encourage you to look at more than just the environmental issues involved. My name is Jim Cunningham, if I didn't identify Thank you. myself. You read lips very earlier, well, sir. Thank you. Jim Cunningham. I live in the PGA Village, and, and I think there are, there are, yes, environmental issues, there are health issues, but there are also financial consequences. And when you talked about the EPA rule, a very important factor in this, uh, if the rule came out, and if for some reason you approved their application prior to all the lawsuits that the gentleman from Becker said would likely take place, and the rule proved to be financially onerous to Compost USA, they could walk away from that and leave that pile of mess there for the people of this county to pay for. So I think the idea of a bond, I think the idea of a requirement, a financial requirement to pay for all public infrastructure improvements that are required to meet the needs of this facility is something else that should be on the table. And in closing, I commend you for the action you're going to take this evening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else present that needs to address the board at this time? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and return to the board. Madam Chair. Commissioner, yes. Uh, some of the comments uh, were uh, about just why not just say, tell them go away, go home. Uh, we don't want this in the county. I think we're bound by law, and I think it's important that maybe Mr. McIntyre briefly run through kind of a, a structure as to how this goes through the process, why we go through the process, and why we're hearing the application at all. Right, uh, commissioners, and I, and I think uh, everybody knows this, but one of the things the courts will look at is whether we followed our own rules. And, and for this and any other type of application, there's a process that's set out in our codes, and it requires public hearings and notice, and uh, we've got to be fair to everybody, to, to the, the objectors, to the, everybody, the applicant. Everybody gets a chance to speak. The board needs to have all the information. It, it needs to go through this process. So it's important for us, the county, the board, to make sure that we give a fair process to to the citizens, to everybody. Uh, that's what our code requires. And so that's, that's why we need to hold a public hearing. We need to advertise it. We need to allow people to talk. We, I think the fact that we're holding a special meeting indicates that the board's aware that there's a significant public interest here. So this will be, when we hear this, it's going to be the only item on the agenda. It won't be any proclamations or anything like that, 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 that we're, we're just here for this item. And I think it's important for the board uh, and the public to make sure we understand that. And, and this is a quasi-judicial uh, proceeding in that we have to give disclaimers as to who we've met with and all those types of things as well, right? Yes, sir. When, when we do finally hear this, we'll need to make disclosures. Uh, the board will, of, of all contacts, uh, site visits, things like that. There's a process that the, the law requires that we go through, and that's, that's what we will end up doing when we hear this and on December the 3rd. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman. Uh, and that's what I wanted the, the audience to understand is that, that, that while this is a very important issue to each of you and, 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 and even the applicant, uh, that this is a process that we're going to undertake and there's reasons for it. So I wanted the, the public to understand that and, and be more aware. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any further comments from the board at this time? Before we entertain a motion, I would like to ask for, this, uh, for us to reveal what contacts we've had at this point in time. 
This is not the hearing. I don't think we. Hearing. I think we can defer that until the, the, the December third. Okay. I think it'll be more meaningful because you're going to have more contacts between well, now and December third. Okay. 3rd. I was just thinking since there was a motion to take place. I, I think. I think at this point the board just needs to, if it's so inclined, move to continue the public hearing. Madam Chair, make a motion to move this meeting until Dece this continued hearing until December third to be heard at six o'clock or soon thereafter at a special meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second. Was there a comment, sir? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. That Second motion passes. We need to take a 10-minute break, I believe. There's been a request that we go out front and get pictures taken with the dog food. <laughs> okay, perfect. Go get pictures with the dog food.